Good morning, guys. Good morning. Happy Friday. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Doug? Yeah, you don't mind me. You don't mind me, do you, Skip? You don't mind if I do this, do you? <laughs> Ah, break with the champ. This is good stuff. Get why you just not turning me on to this. Man, this is so good. You've been hiding all this good old. Mm. Have another swig. You deserve it. Whoa. I feel like Donovan Mitchell. Now I don't tell him what's going to happen. I might go off the date. So, I would like to congratulate my partner, Shannon Sharp, for beating me twice on Diet Mountain Dew yeah, bets last yeah, night. Yeah. He crushed me. He had two rare, very rare victories. Mm -hmm. And in honor of those victories, I deserve to be punished today. So I, I'm going to display these because I'm wearing loser <laughs> sneakers today. I had to join the James gang. I had to resort to wearing for the first time in the history of Undisputed something other than Jordans. I wore LeBron 18s because I lost. And in honor of LeBron's losing and being out, where is LeBron? I, I've lost track of where he's he is. Out. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's probably Space working Jam. out in St. Kitts. <laughs> I deserve today to wear loser's sneakers. I lost. I am condemned to wear these for two and a half hours. And it makes me sick. And I apologize, Michael, Jeffrey, Jordan, wherever you are. It will never, ever happen again because I will never, ever again lose a bet to this man. You know what happened? Ever since Thank you, you. Them, ever since Monday when you came out here with them Jolly Ranchers. Mm -hmm. You remember them Jolly Ranchers? Do I? The Jolly Ranchers. You up there, Kiki, Kiki, and now yep. look at you. Kawhi's. <laughs> yep. Ooh. I hope you enjoy your moment because mm -hmm. it's not going to last more to very come. long. I got more moments to yeah. come. Mm. You think this is it? You think this is the end for me? This is why they play <laughs> seven game series in the National it Basketball Association. It's not going seven. So, Shannon? Did the Jazz win it or did the Clippers blow it? The Jazz won it. And they've done this in the two games, Skip. They've won in a myriad of different ways. They fall behind by 13 points, get down by as many as 14 after missing 20 consecutive shots. And they find a way, they claw their way out. Donovan Mitchell goes bonkers and he scores 45 and they win that ball game. Even though the auxiliary guys did not play very well. This game, the, the Jazz jump out to a 21-point lead. The Clippers come all the, will it all the way down, come all the way back, take a two-point lead. Mm. And the difference between this series and the last series, once they took the ball out of Luka's hands, nobody else seemed to can go get an, their own shot, could go make a shot. You took the ball out of Donovan Mitchell's la hands last night, and what happened? Bogdan, bomb three. Joe Ingles, I told you, and I told you yesterday, Skip, I said, you actually think Bogdan going to keep shooting this bad from the three? Mm. You keep thinking Joe Ingles going to shoot this bad from the three? Mm. You actually believe that, don't you? You, you are a genius. You're a genius. I've never seen anything like it before. No. Your basketball acumen savant. is it's, it's savant yeah, level. Yeah, it, yeah. It is, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to this basketball Woo. thing, I'm a Mensa member. Woo. When it comes to this basketball, I'm a mental member. I've never seen things yeah. like that before. That's why I'm up 45 cases. No, 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 you're up 40. You up 40. 40. <laughs> I'm sorry, 40. I am in that. And not only is Bogdan making threes, mm -hmm. what is he doing to your guy? The best player on the planet. Mm. What are you doing to him, Skip? Locked him. Two yeah. points in the fourth quarter. That's the way he used to lock down LeBron Don't do that, when Skip. Indiana played Cleveland. Don't do you remember do, those Skip, days? Don't do that. We're, we're not talking about LeBron. Yep. This is about the Kawhi. This is about the Utah Jazz mm -hmm. and the number they're doing on your Clippers right now. Skip, you got to be impressed with them because normally what happens when you have that big of a lead and it gets whittled all the way down and the team takes a lead, it normally breaks your spirit. It breaks your will. You're like, damn, we have a 21-point lead and here we are. We're behind now. But I like the grit. I like the determination. They say, no, 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 not tonight. And Donovan Mitchell, and I, I give, give Ty Lue credit, Skip. He saw that he couldn't do anything with him. He went to a zone. And the zone got them off kilter a little bit because they're swinging the ball around the perimeter. Well, in the zone, you got to attack the middle. And then you drive and you kick it. Let Rudy go there, drive to the rim, or you kick it to those three, uh, those shooters. And that's what started to happen. They started to crack that zone, kick. Guys got some open threes, and they won the ball game. Reggie Jackson saved your guy's legacy because this was about to be a blowout. If he doesn't go bonkers in the third quarter, Skip, this thing's about to get out of hand. Mm. But Reggie Jackson... He looked like Mr. October, the, the original Reggie Jackson, with the mm -hmm. way he played in the third quarter. He's playing unbelievable. But, Skip, you got your work cut out for you. Mm -hmm. This is a different Jazz team than what we saw last year that had a three that was down three. Uh, 
that blew a 3-1 lead. They're different. They are. Uh, they're very different. Oh. Donovan Mitchell oh. is the best player in this series right. right now. Aren't they the same guy? No, 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 no. They look just the same to me. No. I don't know. You remember? Denver, they had Denver down in the, in the fourth quarter, in the game seven, and Denver came back and got him. Mm-hmm. No, you're not coming back and getting these guys. Mm. Spider Mitchell's on a different mm. level. The role players are different. They can make, take, and make big shots. Not only early, but late when it matters. Mm. They won this game. The Clippers didn't lose it. Mm. They won it. So, once again, I got to get a different television. I need a new update. That black and white that I watch, it, yeah. it's just it's With the hazy and analog. shady. And, and I, I, I can't. You see a very different game way up there in the hills of Beverly Hills. Well, stop watching it on your iPad. Yeah, Watch okay. it on a regular TV. I'm, I've got the rabbit ears on yeah, my Yeah, I know TV. you do yeah. with Tim Fall on them. <laughs> I saw a very different game. Okay. This Clipper team is going to be the death of me. This Clippers team, my Clippers, are going to put me in an earlier grave. <laughs> My Clippers, as I told you a week ago when the Dallas series concluded, are simply the most frustrating team in playoff games I have ever attempted to watch. It got so bad for me last night, I, I couldn't watch my TV anymore. I, I literally went around the corner and just listened because somehow just listening didn't hurt as much as watching and hearing at the same time. I could not look at the screen. I just waited for the roar of the crowd. And I got to tell you, that crowd, <laughs> it's, it's an insane asylum. It, it is. is an insane asylum at Utah because it comes through my TV and hits me with such force. It actually knocks me back in my cheer, chair when they make a, a three. And the, it, the roar is so... It's so overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's like a feeding frenzy of three-point shots. Mm -hmm. And every time they make one, it feels like a six-point shot instead of a three-point shot. I've never heard anything coming through my TV quite like this. And then they're banging all their things, and, and Kawhi's missing a free throw because there's stuff going on behind the basket that they haven't seen for a couple of years. You are the most superstitious person yeah. I've ever met. That is correct. You can yeah, verify <laughs> that with my wife and my dog. Thank you very much. You go around the corner. Okay. So, once again, here we go again. The, the Clippers just have to do it the hardest way. I'm not discouraged by what I saw because I saw a Clippers team that was right there in both games. Mm -hmm. I saw a Clippers team that for long stretches showed me they're superior to your team, the Utah Jazz. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw my team in game one be up 13 at half mm -hmm. and then blow it and then still manage to rally down the stretch and have a shot to tie it at the end of regulation. Right. Well, there's no real shame in that. And then in game two, I saw my Clippers fall behind in the third quarter by 21 points. Mm -hmm. 21 points. Are, are you believing this? With 9.27 left in the third quarter, the score went to 76 to 55 home team. And what happened? A 46 to 23 run happened. My team blew your team off the floor in Utah in the insane asylum, 46 to 23. They beat them by 23 points over a fairly lengthy stretch mm -hmm. that that ended, that culminated with a big exclamation point as my man, Mr. October, who is now Mr. June, <laughs> Reggie Jackson hits yet another three to put them up 101 to 99 with 637 left in the fourth quarter. Yes. And I'm looking at Balmer over there, and he's doing all this yeah, crazy yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, and yeah. everybody with him's up just applauding. And it's like, we got this. We got him on the run. And then I see Donovan Mitchell over on the, there he is. Thank you. Right on cue. He's kicking a chair over. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, did he hurt his foot again? You know, like he, he this, this is like huge frustration. And, and it looks like, it feels like the air has suddenly gone completely out of the crowd. And then, you know, and I know what happened next. Nothing good for my Clippers because then they gave up an 18 to 10 run down the stretch mm -hmm. to lose the game 117 to 111 by six. And you gave me three and a half points, and you're you're in huge trouble with six minutes left. You're in huge trouble because again and again, I had the ball in our hands with shots to put you away because I've still got a cushion of three and a half points. Right. And here we go. I'm, I'm going to count the ways that the Clippers blew this game. 
because from that Reggie Jackson shot, 6, 637 left, that put them up 101 to 99, would you believe my Clippers proceeded to miss nine straight shots? Nine straight shots. Yeah. And, and they're not hard shots. They're open shots. They're thank you God shots in the insane asylum. Yeah. Where all you need to do is maybe make one or two of them, and you're right there. Maybe if you make three of them, you win the game. And if we could see them in order, please, it starts with a Nicholas Batum miss from the corner, which he's deadly on. It starts with Batum. This is with 602 left. Kicks it to Batum, and he's got a nice shot, and it just it's just lips out, yep. and that, that's to go up three. And then the next one, I got a Marcus Morris. This is wide open. This is my man Marcus Morris, who at seven out of nine against Dallas, that's to go up two. Yeah, but you remember what he's been in the yeah. last two games. And here we go with the Patrick Beverly miss. You actually wide thought, open. You thought okay, that was going to go He was 0 for 5 Thank in you. the game, and that's to go up two. Then we're another Marcus Morris here. Marcus Morris, where's Marcus? Where's Marcus? There he is. There he's not. Marcus Morris, What? You missed again? Yep. That's to go up one. And then we got another Pat Bev, little runner in the lane. Man, and it's it, up, and it's not up. And that's uh, to cut it to five. And then one more time, please, Marcus Morris. Pretty open shot, fairly open shot, and he misses it. That's what about Kawhi's tip? What about Kawhi's tip? That's, this is a tip. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Don't, don't try it, to speed past that. That's PG. Okay. That's PG. He yeah, when the game, when the yep. game mattered, yep. what was PG doing? And it climaxes here with another Mr. June little step back from the corner, I mean, down the baseline, mm -hmm. and he misses that. That was to cut it to eight. So I just showed you the litany of misses. I just showed you that my man Marcus Morris went, let me count over five the ways, three. 0 for 5 from 3. Mm -hmm. So wait a second. My man Marcus Morris, and what did I tell you yesterday? I'm starting to think that the Clippers go as Marcus Morris goes. Mm -hmm. He was 1 for 9 from 3 in game 1. He was 0 for 5, including three huge misses down the stretch of that game where it's just begging for the Clippers right. to steal it. And that makes him 1 for 12 from 3 over the last two games. Marcus Morris, who went 7 of 9 in Game 7 against Dallas. Marcus Morris, who in Game 3 on a fateful Friday night, what would that be, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. He made three threes from that far corner it, in Dallas mm -hmm. to just salt the game yep. away. He he just shot their hearts out in a packed house right. in Dallas, right. game three on Friday night. Right. Whew. And, and now he's one for 12, and all of a sudden, he's turned into the evil twin. Marcus Morris is not the evil twin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's the driving force of my team. He's the guts and clutch shooter. He's actually the closer for my team. And, and I've got him missing three and my team missing nine straight shots, and it drives me out of my mind because you were cooked. You were shot. It's not like they turned up the heat on defense. I just showed you those shots. Turn it up. Like, like seven of them are just wide open, and maybe two of them are fairly contested, but they're makeable shots. And you don't make one shot out of nine, and the thing slips away to a 10-point game? Skip, you keep saying there's no shame in losing and playing the way they play. But if you're the best team, you told me this is the best team. You tell me every single weekday we come in here, Jeff Gang Gundy, Jeff Van Gundy says this is the deepest team. He so said if it's you're the best, the best, best in the West. He okay, they, so, so they got to be shamed. You losing, you're the best. But see, here's the difference, Skip. The thing of the fact of the matter is, is Utah, the shots that they're missing, those are the guys you want to take the shot. Mm. You want Marcus Morris Senior to take that shot. You want Nicholas Batum to take that shot. You want Reggie Jackson to take that shot. You want it because guess what? Because it's throwing Kawhi off his rhythm. See, you don't get that. That when Reggie Jackson gets hot, it's throwing the other guys off that need the ball. It's throwing them off their rhythm. That's why they don't care. It was significant in this stretch of nine straight misses. <laughs> but Kawhi got, Kawhi got no real shot because right. he had one tip chance to miss, but he got no shot. Right. No play appeared to be called for Kawhi. Let's just get Kawhi the ball and let him do Kawhi what he does. Kawhi had him locked in solitary. Oh, locked up, yep. Okay, we'll see how much he's locked Bob up, had him locked up tomorrow night. So here's the point about the Clippers. They have to do it the hardest way. That They went to Dallas and won a game three on that fateful Friday night in which Dallas made 23-point shots, just as Utah did last night. But 20, I told you, you won two bets. I already you said ain't that. telling me what the bets were. Well, did they make 20, and they, they lucked into 20. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you how they lucked into it in just a second. But the point was that... Dallas made 23s and lost a home playoff game, and it was the first time in playoff history, mm -hmm. NBA playoff history, that a home team had made 20 or more 
and lost. Right. And the Clippers pulled that off. Well, guess what? No team in NBA history has ever gone down 0-2 twice in the postseason and lived to tell about it. Correct. No team has ever advanced off two O two 2 downs. Correct. And now the Clippers have a chance to make more NBA right. history. Yes. But, again, you were very fortunate because – can we? I, I want to show you one of the threes that you got from Jordan Clarkson at the near, near the end of the third <laughs> quarter. Can we see this one? There's a That's little the bit of a – I didn't call bank shot, one of these – He's over here totally contested, Pull up, JC. heavily contested, and he accidentally banks it in. And I could count that as that might have been your 20th three that won you the bet. Yeah, that, that right? was it right there. That, okay. I, I needed that one. All right. Thank you very much. Try, try this one more time. Is that not heavily contested? The air just goes out of the coaching staff, the sideline. Like, oh, my Luke God. Luke Kennard just throws it. Luke Kennard said, I can't do it any better than that, right? So then we're back to your man, Joe Ingles. I, I've never been a big Joe Ingles guy. I'm sorry, because I look at him, and my first thought is always, how is he in the NBA? <laughs> well, not only is he in the NBA, but but he was runner-up for sixth man of the year. It was between him and his teammate who just lucky banked that one mm -hmm. in, right? Yep. And yet, that guy did me the most damage last night because that guy, if we could see the first shot that he made after Reggie Jackson's big bomb that makes it 101 to 99, here's Joe Ingles. He the throws top it the off the top of the freaking <laughs> backboard. And this is when I yelled to Ernestine. She wouldn't even come in my room because I'm watching. You She's your mind, like, yes. And I yelled to her, I, that's it, I lost. Because if he's going to make it off the top of the backboard, I can't win this game. It's just your night. If Jordan Clarkson's going to bank it, lucky bank it in, and then he's going to make one off the top of the backboard, I just said, I'm cooked. But Skip, I'm and, done. And the, but this, this was really the backbreaker here, is that you okay. let it walk into okay. a three. All right. And that was your 20th three, yeah. and that was the killer because that made it a 10-point game. Mm -hmm. And the way he shoots it, he can't jump. He just shoots it up. It's, it's kind of Bird-esque, except he's right. a very poor man's Larry Bird. Because a lot of times, Skip, he'll just catch the ball in all in one motion. Well, he doesn't even bring it down. Well, he well, catches it up well, here. He caught and one it. in the corner in the yes. first half, and he just caught it up there and just shot it. Yep. Like, he, he didn't even, like, change directions. He just, like, yep. wrist flicked it. Yes, and yes. It, and it looks awkward because he's left-handed. It's like everything's right. backward and wrong right. about him. And he killed me last mm -hmm. night. Can he do that for seven games? Uh, I don't think so. But Skip, Can the, he do it for three games? I don't think but so. But here's the thing. They're going to take and they're going to make a bunch of threes because you said they led the NBA. They was going to set a record in the most threes made. So they average about making about 17 a game. Mm -hmm. so, they're, so they're right on cue. If you look at what they what they get, 17 the first game. So they're right on cue, 14 the okay. first game. So they're right on par I got with it. where they are. All so right. to hope that they're going to come back is not going to – the thing that you guys got to do is that Spider Mitchell is outplaying your two superstars head-to-head. -head. Okay. That's the difference in the ball game, Skip. He's outplayed them both times by himself. Okay. Now, speaking of Donovan Mitchell, and I remind our – faithful viewers. I was the one pushing for Donovan Mitchell to be Rookie of the Year, and you were down on Donovan Mitchell, right. and you were up on Ben Simmons. Right, Ben Simmons should have been okay. Rookie of the Year. So, so just for the record, I love Donovan Mitchell. I campaigned for him yeah. to be Rookie of the Year. Right. And yet, here's what I just saw happen with Donovan Mitchell. In the third quarter and the fourth quarter of game number one, he scored 16 and 16. Mm -hmm. That's 32 points in the second half. Right. That's, what you, that's when you just tip your cap. Right. That's when you say, too good, thank you very much. Right. Next, mm -hmm. right? 16 in the third, 16 in the fourth. Then we open up last night, and he goes 14 in the first and 13 in the second. Yeah. It's impossibly good. And I yelled to Ernestine, that's just too good. Yeah. Like, like, if that's who you are and that's what you're going to do, then this isn't going to last very long because that is – unstoppable mm -hmm. that's unguardable because he's shooting with such range it's it's like Steph it's like Dame except he he's stronger than they are mm -hmm. he he plays like like a fullback you yeah. know th this he's guy kind of built like a fullback cool. he, he is a he fullback. don't have an NBA body he has like a football player okay body. so think of this so if I take the span of those four quarters which is like the equivalent of one game mm -hmm. that's 59 points over those four quarters and, and here are the numbers 22 of 32 from the floor uh, that's 69%. 9 of 15 from 3, uh, that's 60%. That's just too good. Yet, what happened? They did go to zone, as you point out. Mm -hmm. That was a sweet move. It's, it's, it's desperate, but, right. but I loved it. Right, right. Because it was discombobulating. It took the crowd out of the game. Right. It took the rhythm out of the game. They were just a little bit 
off guard for a while. Right. They couldn't find a rhythm to attack the mm -hmm. zone. And so all of a sudden, your man, Spider Mitchell, he goes for a grand total of three points in the third quarter on one of six shooting. And then he scored seven in the fourth, which is beatable. You, you can beat right. seven because he goes three of seven, but oh, of one from three. Right. So your man, Spider Mitchell, made one three in the second half. I can live with that. Right. I can beat that. I can't beat Joe Ingles making it off the top of the back. But that's the thing, though, Skip. The difference is, is that when Lucas uh, uh, struggled down the stretch, nobody else can make a shot. I don't know. Tim Hardaway was making a whole bunch of Skip, shots. Tim Hardaway, Ooh. did you see in, the la in, game, in game seven, Finney Smith and Luca was 9 of 18. Everybody else was 1 of 18. Mm. So clearly they weren't making shots down the stretch. You look at this team, Joe Ingles, Bogdanovich, even Royce O'Neal got into the action. And because you got to understand, Skip, you're asking Bogdanovich and Ingles to do a lot because they're playing Paul George and they're playing Kawhi. So we got to try to neutralize them. But on the other end, on the offensive end, I still need you to give me my production. Mm. And so maybe that's what's taking a lot out of Kawhi because you're asking him to do a lot, Skip. Yep. Okay, stay in front of Donovan Mitchell and still give us the 35 like you gave us in, in, in um, against Dallas. Mm -hmm. So Donovan Mitchell is a handful. Now, I need somebody to tell me, Skip, how many points do you think Donovan Mitchell would have had if the two greatest wing defenders since Pip and Jordan mm -hmm. with Pat Bell, if they were really, really bad at defense? Mm. He got 27, and they're supposed to be elite. Mm. Speaking of Pat Bev, <laughs> okay, I, I realize it was a desperation move. Uh, by the way, my guy, Playoff Rondo, played a grand total of zero last night. DMP. Zero. DMP. I'm, lo I'm looking at this list on the box score, and I have to go to the very bottom of the list, right? Mm -hmm. Rajon Rondo, DNP coach's decision. Didn't play a second in this game, but Patrick Beverly played 21 minutes in this game because he is a defensive disruptor. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have to go both ways in basketball. Right. And so every time he was called upon to make just one shot, just, just help us with one little mm -hmm. shot, he goes 0 for 5. Right. And I got to tell you, I love Patrick Beverly. I, ju I just like him personally. I like what he's made of. Mm -hmm. he, he is sort of the heart and soul and the, the guts right. of the Clippers. But, but on offense now, he's looking a little like long in the tooth, like, like he's looking like – He's nearing the end on offense. Well, Skip, he's never he's never been an elite level offensive player. His bone, like you said, he'll you know force turnovers. He'll but, get up but and I tell you. I have seen him make threes oh, yes, at a pretty yes. good pace. Yes, you know he'll make big threes. Well, didn't this, last night. There's a big moment here, Skip. Okay, there's, these so, are big moments. What have I told you about my Clippers? They're not the same old trouble? Clippers. No, they're not because this team has playoff backbone. Where? It's not like it. Uh, where? Oh, two. A, a 46 to 23 run when you're down 21? You're kidding me. To fight back on in game one and, and bring it down to a last second sh a possible shot to tie? That's guts. That's intestinal fortitude I've never seen from any Clippers team. That's why they're going to win game three. That's why you ultimately will be in trouble. Mark my words and eat my words. We're coming back to Utah up 3-1. Okay, we'll see about that. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.